today in the, in the technology industry, these market players always faces two things. First, it is always able to grab a lucrative um, market opportunity by selling their products at a high margin and to attract a lot of customers. But at the same time, they are always worried when they will be replaced, when their technology will become obsolete, and when they are no longer popular. Therefore, today, Lenovo faced the same problem. In order to face this chain, ever-changing market trend, our team would like to proudly present to you the ThinkBit strategy, which is a software development and also business uh, systems development for the Chinese business sector so that it will be able to build Lenovo as a brand that can stand firm even in this ever-changing market demographics. To further on, we first would like to take a look at how Chinese, how Lenovo is standing currently in the Chinese market. It is very strong in the Chinese market. There is a strong there is strong leading position due to its low cost production. Its distribution is also having a very strong network. And also more importantly, it has a very strong development in the hardware component. But again, this is also at the flip side of the coin. Because of these strong core competencies, so deep rooted, so that Lenovo was not able to gain international recognition uh, to a very large extent. And, bear, and focus on hardware also makes, it depend, makes you dependent on the other com soft computer components, such as software. Therefore, it arises to our key question of how Lenovo can establish a brand for expansion and also sustainability in the market. We believe that our strategy, ThinkBit, which is a business systems development will be able to establish and Lenovo as a top brand that can endure such an ever-changing and also dynamic market trend. Now, we understand that proposing to develop a software is very radical change for your company. Therefore, the first thing that we have to know is why we are targeting software. And the first reason is about the compatibility. Because now your customers no longer want uh, no longer only own one device, they always own more than one. And what they value is the compatibility. You don't want your content on iPhone doesn't exist your iPad. You want them to exist together and also even for your Mac. And this is the same for business user. You want your Excel file in your uh, you know, computer of your business in your office, but you also want to get access to it in your home. Therefore, Google provides Google Chrome, which is an account for you to store everything and also provide Google Doc. And we, we see this compatibility is, a, is what customer value now. And there, but this compatibility cannot be done with hardware. It has to be supported by software. This is why software is so important. Well, understanding software is so important. Then why, why we have to forego what we are now good at, forego our core competencies? We have to look at hardware. What's the problem with hardware? Well, look at all the hardware development company like Dell and HP. Because hardware is so fast changing, every, every now and then they launch some new products. The uh, latest uh, camera, the latest chips and something. And what you have to do is only to catch up with the trend. And it doesn't add value to your brand. So the implication here is the software lasts. And it is the software which distinguish a brand, distinguish the novel. And we also done a kind of a spectrum about the four uh, hardware that we are doing now, PC, laptop, tablet, and smartphone. The first thing that I would like to draw your attention on is about Apple. Why Apple is so famous, so popular, and so successful? It's because it's launched its own hardware and also software. And these two hardware and software, you, if you want to own one, you have to own the other one. And these make the package so exclusive to other companies. And when we look at Samsung, Samsung also has the, all these four uh, hardware. However, the, so, the operation system for PCs and laptops is supported by Microsoft, the Windows OS. For tablet and smartphone, it's supported by Google, the Android. So therefore, the development of 
the Samsung hardware is very much limited by the development of the software itself. It's, and when we look at, well, Microsoft want to extend to other markets such as tablet launching the Surface, we see that we are actually losing uh, our core competencies to this software, which we want our partner. Therefore, we have, th this is why we cannot do without software. So we understand this is a radical change. However, I would like to stress this is actually a feasible strategy. Because in China, the average salary for software development is about 5,000 to 7,000 RMB per month. This is actually not a lot. And when we consider Apple spend this 2.5% of its revenue on R&D, and we understand this is a new business arm for Lenovo. Therefore, we propose to spend 5% of the sales revenue into the R&D for the next uh, four years. So we are developing the software arm, but are we targeting the whole market? Well, we are only targeting the B2B market for now. What, the reason why is, be, is two for The first, we have to ex understand why we cannot do mass market. First, is because it, and it's incur great effort in market research. And it has to know the cu customer preference. Uh, it has to do a lot of maintenance work. And this may add a further burden to Lenovo, which is currently expanding rapidly for its capex. And also, the mass market is always start changing. And one more important element for the mass market is because it's one interactive. It doesn't only want the customers to use our software, but you also want to encourage our customers to develop software, for, such as the App Store. Everyone can develop their app and in a way, create a networking event to allow other people to also use this software. Therefore, we cannot target the mass market because it incur a lot of effort. So why B2B? Because we have to understand the objective of today is to establish Lenovo as a global brand. So we see that there is an increasing transaction or increasing business activities between Chinese corporation and also international company. And we see a well, targeting B2B market is actually opening up a doorway for us to go international. And we, what we want to achieve is become a sort of a Chinese version of BlackBerry. First, we have to target the security. And second, it's particular to China. It's about relationship. Therefore, what we're going to do is this product like this. We will launch a product made by Lenovo, but also the software is about Lenovo. And in, as we treasure security, every company will have their own uh, database, which Lenovo now, your company, is also on the top with IBM and also another company about acquiring the software. So this is actually feasible. So after understanding what and why we are going to do, now we move on to how we do it. So now we understand what we're trying to um, produce, um, introduce to our customer. And what we're going to offer them is some benefits that your company is going to bring to them. First of all, leveraging on your core competency of in hardware and also the newly developed um, software, we're going to offer them a connectivity within their um, devices, such as tablets and also smartphone. And in this stage, we're going to, um, first of all, connect the tablet and smartphone first, because um, there is an increasing mobility um, in our usage of devices. And also, these two products, they have the highest profit margin for your company to earn more. And we're not doing laptop because Microsoft is currently doing it, and it is difficult for us for you to um, compete head to head with them. Therefore, we're going to target um, some MNCs, multinational um, corporations first, such as Zhong Lang LaSalle, and they are large in size, and they, are, um, ha they handle critical information, a, a large amount of them, in which they um, value security. And also, connection is important to them, and they can help us to reach out to more international businesses um, through the networking effect. And how are we um, exactly re um, reaching out to the businesses? First of all, um, it is going to be done through personal selling. And we're going to um, have sales pitch to these companies because it is 
and actually a new product. So we have to commun you have to communicate directly to them the benefits and also the features of your company. So it is more likely for them to adopt the new product. And secondly, we're going to offer them a one year trial period, which allows a transition time for the businesses, your future partners, and also we give them an incentive to try out the new product. And let's take an um, Apple's example. Um, Apple, they are trying to um, encourage some international schools in Hong Kong to use their products. So they allow a one year um, trial period for the school to use everything in um, Apple iOS and also in Macintosh um, computers. And now many um, international, international schools in Hong Kong, they're actually using um, Macintosh um, such as Zhuchong and international schools. And we believe that this one year trial period will be very important to increase the trial rates of this new product. And eventually, we're going to bring to Nanovo, your company, a global brand. Since we're targeting at some um, NNCs, this can leverage, um, which is leveraging on your um, customer connection now. We're going, and once this um, when it's your customer is attached to your new product, um, and their co and their business partner is going to follow suit and and use uh, um, and use your new product, which is to build a foundation for you to grow internationally. And secondly, we um, it allows you to catch the ever ch changing PC trends, since um, we cannot it is difficult to predict the trend, and since you have developed a new software, which allows you to um, um, launch new products without the help of a um, software company. So now I'll hand over to um, Ernest to talk about the finance, um, financials. So before moving on to the financials, we truly understand that our strategy has to be implemented in a steady pace. So that's why we, we forecast in the future five years, we will have the development of software first for the first 1.5 years. After all, we have to communicate this new technology to the end users and this will mainly be our implementation timeline. We truly understand that your company is very good at the PC side of the business. So that's why we see that 90% of the revenue are actually coming from this stream. Now, our strategy is able to change the revenue stream's proportion. On the one hand, we can shrink from the B2, B2B sector by providing the software to the businesses. And on the other hand, this will be synergized by the sales of the hardware so as to provide the compatibility to the business users. Looking at the current trends, we see that the main challenge that your company is facing is trend is shifting away from a PC and a focus on compatibility and a comprehensive service. So that's why we see that um, e on, on our current business model, if we are just solely focusing on a PC, ignoring tablets and also the software market, at best, we're just doing a 20% CAGR of revenue in the future three years as compared to what we have achieved of 40% now. Now, our strategy is able to change this. First of all, about the pricing of our product. We actually want to sell in a bundle price. First of all, we can ensure that by selling the software, pro software service, they are also at, at their convenience purchasing the hardware to support what they can do with this software. And this will be depend, the pricing of this bundle will depend on what kind of service employed and also the number of employees as well as the size of the companies. Now, we're, we want to first focus not on SME, but the multinational corporations because we see the increasing needs of having an integrated business service in these kinds of companies. We will for forecast that for the lump sum fee, they have to pay 20 million USD for the initial purchase. And because of our sustained uh, service, our, our service service provided to them, then we will charge them 2 million USD per year. We foresee that for the first year, we can secure 1,000 to 2,000 companies uh, in these regions, and also we will have an incremental of 100 to uh, 500 to 1,000 companies per year, so as to have our sustained revenue. As our software is coming out in not the foreseeable future, but about 1.5 years, we see that our projected revenue will deviate from the original starting from the years of 2013, and we will have a 
61 billion USD revenue at the end of 2015. However, we, for, we acknowledge that with this new strategy, there's a lot of capital expenditure in regards to the software development as well as our hardware in an increasing capacity of production. First of all, we can see there are mainly three core uh, cost items. For the one-stop business usage, we have to increase our R&D expenses as Ryan has previously mentioned. And on the other hand, we have to expand the production capacity to meet the increasing needs of these business users and also the increasing employees. And, uh, at the end, we have to ensure that network effects can be achieved in the sense that when a lot more and more business users are actually employing our service, then the compatibility across the nation will be boosted so that we have to ensure that people know this and because of the crowd effects, then we can sustain our future growth. So this will be mainly the three core items we have to incorporate. So taking into account the cost item, we see that because of the huge capital expenditure and also the production cost in the first year, our net profit will deviate even, uh, even decrease as compared to what we are having in the first year. However, as our customer increases and we are trying to recover our profit out of it, then at the end of 2013, we forecast an incremental of 0.4 billion USD net profit in that particular year, and we foresee that this will grow steadily in the foreseeable future. And what we have uh, assumed in this is that our profit margin in the short term will be decreased due to our increase in SGNA. However, in the long run, due to our, uh, our introduction of software service, which are having a higher profit margin, than what we are doing at, as the surf hardware surface, then we will increase our profit margin from 1.6% to about 2 to 3% in the years after our, we have successfully uh, developed our surface to the business uses. Today, by bringing the Think Bit strategy, we would like to stress two things. First, Lenovo cannot withstand the ever-changing market trend without incorporating the development of software. Secondly, Lenovo is not able to become a global brand unless it is tapping into a niche market by extending our, by leveraging through the Chinese, Chinese emerging market and its relationship with the MNCs in order to build a global brand that is recognized among the business sectors. Therefore, by developing the business systems, Lenovo will become a global brand and, and at the same time bringing an incremental income of 25 billion USD at 2015. Thank you very much. So thank you yeah, for that. Ahead. Thank you for that presentation. Um, I, I kind of have a, a two part question. I guess the first part is, correct me if I'm wrong, what you're talking about doing is taking the cash cow of PCs out the back and shooting it, and then going head to head with essentially Google, Apple, Samsung, all of those, as well as going head to head with our one of our biggest partners, which is Microsoft, because they're in the software game, and we're now going to go head to head with them. So first part is, have I got that right? Um, and why would you do that? Um, the second part is, if we struggle to get a brand with the huge number of hard amount of hardware that's out there, how are we possibly going to build a brand going up against, directly up against the likes of the Apples and Samsungs, Googles that already have those massive brands? So I would like to take the first question first. So, well, uh, I remember that your question is twofolded. First of all, why we are shooting a cash cow? So we reckon that. Uh, cash, it is still a cash cow in these few years. However, we see that the trend is changing in the sense that the laptops and the uh, uh, mobile devices can actually perform most of the functions and of PC. And st even with we still are, uh, we are having a core competency in this, we see that the compatibility is of the most important uh, items that we have to consider. So that that we are trying to. Uh, not to retreat, but to place more focus on the other side of the business. And secondly, it's why we're going to go head on it with like Samsung's or Apple 
or the Microsoft, even the software guys. So we want to stress that we, even though we are trying to convey a software, we are still having a different positioning. So for Microsoft, they are having uh, more of a, for the for the like the words or the Excel stack to facilitate the business operations. However, our our software is able to uh, bring out the extra benefits that is to store the data and also to give some analysis to the data and also at the end point of user, the salesperson, they can refer back to the information to facilitate their personal selling. So this is not what our company is doing and we see that this is the niche that we have to tap into and this will be the profitable business of our B2B business in the future. So this is the answer for that first question. So and then the question around the brand. If we couldn't develop it before, how are we going to develop it with something totally new? Uh, so this is your second. Your second question is about how, if I understand correctly, is how can we compete with other hardware? Well, no, we're we're already a major name, and th th as far as we think, but globally we're not even in the top one hundred from a brand recognition perspective, and that's with a well-known, well-respected product that we make. You're asking us to launch a brand new product in a brand new sector in a brand new way and hoping that that will leverage the brand? Would that not degrade the brand? Well, we truly understand that since we are not a very well-known company in the worldwide, but however, we see that we are actually a leading company in China. So that's why we're saying that we first will propose this new strategy in China using our current uh, goodwill that we have built upon. So for the business users, they have already uh, known of this brand in the sense that we have been providing a hardware. So we understand that since this is a new uh, service we have to provide, so that's why we have to increase our lots of expenses to try to convey what this service is contributing to them. So I would say that this is uh, what we have uh, in China, we can capitalize on our current goodwill, and this will be effectively communicated to the end users. Okay. Um, still on the brand point, as I understand it, your strategy is, is targeting the China business sector. Um, and whilst China is, is potentially a very large market, you said that you will target that as an avenue to launching a global brand. So by targeting one specific country, admittedly a potentially large market, how do you consider that will get you global brand recognition? Um, I would like to first make a point by saying um, since we see China is where we are standing strong at and by launching a new product uh, we uh, inevitably see that by launching this completely new product immediately to a place that we are not even known it might be a very risky move and that's why we hope that through China and uh, it will be our first uh, location where we can first launch this product and have the um, have retained a group of users um, so that so and and so that through their uh, re current business relationship um, that is networked so widely to the other parts of the world we are able to um, still try to de uh, still develop uh, Lenovo as a global brand and just to add on if you want to stay that in the state of course with which is to uh, be a manufacturer for, uh, be the designer and manufacturer for hardware. This is, uh, this is actually very difficult for us to enter into another market. As mentioned in the presentation, compatibility is very important. But then, uh, for the hardware markets, if we are to stay in the hardware market, so how can we uh, enter as a global brand? The, one of the alternatives that we have analyzed is, is actually be the manufacturer for other software uh, like be a partner with other software developers such as Microsoft, uh, Apple, Samsung, uh, Android or, or so. But the limitation of this is, first of all, we are not adding value to these, uh, these company because they are, they are the designer and we are only manufacturing this for them. And this is actually can be done easily by other uh, companies, for example, Foxconn. And also, the other thing is we cannot capture the whole hardware producing market because this, it is unlikely for both Apple, Samsung, and Google at the same time ask us to produce a uh, product for them because they have some uh, business secrets that is not gonna let us to share with other companies. So we see that the, actually we cannot stay in the uh, staying in the hardware market is what we are good at now. But in the long run, it's actually difficult for us to establish ourselves as a global brand 
as a hardware company. Therefore, this is also the reason why we have to tap into the software market. And by tapping into the software market, the first step we cannot, this is the very first step that we enter into the software market and we target the P2P market. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think I appreciate very much that you do try to, you, you try to put forward a, a new idea uh, of putting a new product all together. And that, that, that's you know, what we, we would like to, to see, uh, especially for, for a business case like Lenovo and with all the challenges they're facing. Um, but I, I'm not sure whether I got very much on how you uh, what is the niche? What is the value or differentiation of this new product uh, to existing product like BlackBerry? You, you, you reference the BlackBerry uh, business model or product model, or even Apple, which combines the, the, the hardware and the software together. Um, you know, what is the, the, the niche or the, the new differentiation? That's the first question. The second question, usually, especially even in the case of Lenovo, uh, when you are going into a new product line or even maybe even a new business model, quite often uh, mergers and acquisition is quite an important strategy. I appreciate that you spend quite a lot on the financial uh, analysis, which is very good. but. You know, would uh, mergers M and A feature at all in in, in the uh, business proposition? Um, first of all, maybe I will take that first question. Um, it's actually BlackBerry. We acknowledge BlackBerry may be a, a potential competitor for us. But actually, when we look at BlackBerry, what BlackBerry now is trying to do is not target the niche market. It's actually trying to compete with Apple in the mass market. Therefore, it's launching new products, customizing for the mass market. And this is also the reason why we have to enter the Chinese B2B market fast. Because we have to uh, tap into this market before BlackBerry actually recognize this market opportunity. And the, the uh, core, like what makes us different or what gives us a competitive advantage over BlackBerry is actually we are a well-known Chinese brand. And a lot of Chinese companies is currently using our hardware. Therefore, leveraging on the relationship with these uh, Chinese big corporations we are going to launch uh, our product. And one of another uh, elements included in our product is actually relationship. Because we recognize relationship marketing is actually very important in China, Guanxi. And therefore, uh, at, at the same time, we also uh, analyze the current deal that you're uh, negotiating with IBM and also another company for the server uh, services. We recognize an opportunity for us to create a database for each of our, uh, for our company clients so that they can build a customer profile on in the database. Like for example, in the little illustration, one of the uh, features here is about the uh, market, the target clients, uh, the clients that you're trying to pitch. So for example, the favorite fruit of this uh, Wang Zhong, the CEO of Mr. Wong, is actually uh, the favorite fruit is lobster. So you know this, you remember this on the way of the meeting with this, uh, to meet with this Wang Zhong, you actually know this, uh, know your clients, and you order this food and prepare for him to come. And actually, this is uh, this is actually adding a, a premium for your relationship marketing. And we are actually targeting this uh, specific Chinese uh, characteristics. So it's not a new product design vis-a-vis -vis the existing product in the market, but is a new marketing. Uh, strategy or positioning of the product. It's a new product for Lenovo, but not a new product for the market. Is that what your, um, your, your positioning? Our so the product is actually similar to what exists in the, out there in the market, but it's a new product in the sense of the, uh, to Lenovo, because Lenovo has not produced this product. Is that what you're thinking? Uh, I think to the pro uh, to the market in a sense it's also a new product since uh, we have also mentioned how the other uh, tablets for example have been trying to target for mass usage while what our product is conveying is a specific usage and in particular in business settings so this will be one of the key differentiators we will say in terms of how we sell it into the market. 
And one con I would like to add on and illustrate here is it may look like a, a regular a contact uh, profile of your customer, but actually this is supported by the whole database best stage work because we have the database and we store all our clients' uh, information in it. And you can get access to this database from your app, mobile devices. And why this database is very important is because this is your company information, your client's information, and you don't want to leak it to your competitors. Therefore, security and relationship is what we are trying to target here. Um, as for the second question about the M&A, &A, um, I think that we have actually a cons like it is actually a very good alternative that uh, we should consider. But there are also some uh, other key constraints, um, such as um, that my colleagues might like to address. Um, uh, and to add on to my colleague's point, um, first of all, I think um, your company, um, there is a lack of bargaining power with other um, software companies such as Microsoft and um, Android because um, they're already developing their um, own um, tablets or even smartphones um, in which they do not need our help to, um, to produce the software for them. And also, we, can, um, we see that it is actually um, not very costly to do the um, development of software on our own. As um, Ran has mentioned in the presentation, the cost um, of a programmer in mainland is actually not very high, and that's why we choose to develop the software um, ourselves instead of um, acquiring another company. But um, uh, as for m and uh, we would just like to add that um, if we see a very good opportunity for us to actually acquire a company to do so, we will definitely take this opportunity. Um, yeah, one really quick one. Um, if, if you're going to sell this to B and B2B, um, have you thought about, if I'm a major corporation and you're coming to me with this, why would I change to your product? I've spent millions integrating BlackBerry, millions integrating mobile CRM, blah, blah, blah. Why would I throw all that away to now take on an unknown device? Um, one of the... I'll say one of the current market situation in China we see is uh, BlackBerry is actually acquiring a 10% of the whole uh, market share. It's gradually declining. And we are, and therefore we see this as opportunity for us to target the market that they are leaving is the B2B market. And the, also uh, we are actually providing a one year trial program for them. And it's actually, we believe it's a attractive program for them to trial our program. And one more point is that uh, Lenovo is currently actually a large company supporting uh, hardware to different companies. So we believe, uh, based on our current network and relationship with the, our clients, I believe this is actually an option for them to consider. Yeah.